Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and I'm an attorney that assists healthcare providers with employment contract and independent contractor agreement issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about what is productivity in healthcare. So, more specifically, how is productivity calculated uh, via a healthcare provider's contract? So, there's three main ways that healthcare providers are uh, compensated. Uh, one, just a straight base salary, so there is no productivity. Uh, that kind of goes into how much they get paid. Two, a net collections based model. So in that case, a healthcare provider would get a percentage of all of the um, you know money received by the practice based upon their personally performed services. Uh, or three, an RVU based model. So RVUs are relative value units, and they're kind of a unit of measurement that's uh, issued by the Center for Medicare Services (CMS) and then provides a numerical value to each encounter that a healthcare provider has. Now, <clears throat> different industries use one of those three uh, more than others. And then obviously there are many models that are kind of hybrids of two or even three of those combined into one type of compensation model. So let's just kind of go through each one and talk about how productivity will be calculated. So in a straight base salary, you just get, say you're a, a primary care physician and you're making 200,000 a year um, and there's nothing involved with productivity, that's it. You just get your base salary, do the work that's in front of you, and that's it. Now, as far as net collections go, uh, that is a productivity-based model. And so it is not what you produce or is billed out, it is what there is actually collected by the organization. So there are times where you could provide a service and for whatever reason, the insurance company cuts down the bill or refuses to pay for a service or a patient just, you know, <laughs> doesn't pay the bill. Uh, in those scenarios, the healthcare provider is kind of out of luck and they're not gonna get paid even if they have provided the care. So in a net collections based model, um, the provider will get a percentage, as I said before, of whatever the practice receives. That percentage can vary based upon the profession. So if you're a dentist or veterinarian, it'll probably be somewhere between 18 to 25%. Uh, if you're a physician, probably higher 30 to 35. Um, those are probably the three that use net collections the most. Uh, as far as the next one, RVUs, uh, relative value units, uh, as I said before, CMS issues a number based upon the encounter that you have, and that number uh, increases due to acuity and length of time with the patient. So the higher the acuity, the more time you spend with the patient, the more RVUs that are produced. And then there, uh, that is multiplied by a monetary value, um, and that's called the compensation factor. And that varies based upon specialty uh, and geography for the most part. Those are the two biggest factors. So even if you're, let's just say, a, a physician assistant, a physician assistant who's working in orthopedics will generate a higher compensation factor than one that's just doing primary care. And the same goes for physicians and nurse practitioners. Th those are the three main professions that utilize RVUs, so nurse practitioners, PAs, and physicians. And so uh, there's different ways of working with those models, um, but normally uh, you would get like a base draw. So you'd come up with a number that you would just get regularly in the paycheck, and then maybe monthly or quarterly, uh, it, there'd be a reconciliation where they would simply mu multiply your RVUs tied the compensation factor, and if that's greater than what they paid out via the base draw, then you would get a bonus at the either end of the month or end of the quarter, end of the year, whatever the you know kind of agreed upon reconciliation date would be. So those are the three main ways of being paid, and those are the two main ways, net collections or RVUs of uh, determining productivity in healthcare. There are a few other ways that someone can be paid. It could be based upon encounters. They could just come up with like a flat amount for every encounter. In the dentist industry, there's usually um, a different amount for starts uh, for if you're doing um, orthodontics, 
uh, that type of thing. So there are different ways of doing it, but net collections and RVUs are the most common ways of valuing productivity in healthcare. If you have any questions about your employment contract or independent contractor agreement, uh, feel free to contact my law firm at the contact information listed below in the description. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm happy to answer them. And I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.